I can't believe it's about to be August. Like <laughs> this year has gone by so fast. Right. It's it's almost unbelievable. We about to go on another break soon. I was just thinking that, and you know what I was like? I'm like, it's really only episode 24. Yeah. It really every That's week. Crazy. It, it, I feel like we should be further, but I'm also not complaining. Yeah. Okay. Because you know when we take our break, we break now. <laughs> we break. Bernie Mac boys. Um, That's it. That's crazy. Like, holla it's at your girl. Really about to be like Christmas time. <sighs> Please. It is. I'm gonna need another stimmy. That's cool. Nobody getting no Christmas. Check. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so, like I'm gonna, I, I can't do it. I'm gonna need another stimmy. I'm gonna have to move again. Oh my god. So you made a decision. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's non-negotiable. It's not. A, it's not a game. It's not a game. Okay. I can't. Okay. I cannot. That's fair. I cannot. I get it. I get it. And so, that's it. All righty then. I cannot. Can you be ready to start the show? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to transition. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I didn't know how to transition. I'm ready. All righty. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. What is happening? What's happening? Welcome to episode 24 in the building. Yes. I'm your girl, CRT. Kobe episode. And I'm your girl, Sherelle B. And this is Head Wraps and Lipstick <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> we wrap the culture of the color. Uh, 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 I just realized I was like 24. Yeah, Kobe, rest in peace. Yeah. Damn it. That's crazy. Like, really? And it's been like two years since that, though. Nope, just a year. He died last January. That's how we knew 2020 was going to be some shit. That's how we knew. Oh, snap. He literally passed away in January 2020. I forgot. Oh, wow. Ridiculous. Why does it feel like it's been two years? I don't know. Because hmm. I think it still feels unreal. It's like, yo, Kobe's not here for real? It, yeah. Yeah. It is very, That's very. It's really ghetto. It like, feels very surreal. Um, For sure. For sure. Um, Yes. Welcome to this week's episode. Remember, you can catch us on itstheblock.com. Yes. Lifestyle, culture, arts, entertainment, us finances. <laughs> Black excellence. It's where you. It's where you need to be. It's where you would want to be. Just like Visa, you know. Wait. <laughs> All right. What? What? Visa is everywhere. Oh, that's right. Even, that's a throwback. They don't I'm even say, use that. Is, even, this, is this? Is this still their tagline? They don't even use that no more. I definitely just aged myself. Cool. Remember the commercial was like beef. It's what's for dinner. Doom doom doom. Okay, what brand was that though? Just beef, like just milk. Wait a minute. Time out. Time out. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Time out. It was no. It wasn't a specific brand. No, it was just just like milk was just milk. I thought it was like like was it? For, oh my god! <laughs> no, it was just beef. They are we are dating ourselves. No, for seriously. Real. They're like oh these bitches. Oh, seriously, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes we are, <laughs> and we still look good. Per as the kids say, right? Is that what y'all saying? Per. You know what's weird? Somebody said that on a call today, and I was like, and I wanted to be like per, and I was like, oh, I can't do that here because they don't work. get it. They was like, like no, they were talking about they were like per something, oh. and I was like hmm, per. Yeah, no, I let it go because no, they yeah. wouldn't get it. They'd be like, what? They'd yeah. be like, oh. I don't get it. Is that the, like, is it TikTok? Is that I don't, a TikTok thing? I don't even really get it. So I'll just be going about what the kids say. Well, we used to say period, but now period is too much. So now we reduce. Oh, that's oh, we don't say period at all. It's just per now. Well, I think Gen Z is not saying period. I think I think they're just saying per. Oh. Anyways. Anyway, sis, what can't you wrap your head around this week? Okay, I have two things. Mm-hmm. I've been holding on to this. Sis actually made it, made, made me write it down. Okay. I sure did. You made me write yes. it down. Yes, yes, okay? I did. I cannot wrap my head around us wearing these Bass Pro Shop hats. I don't know what the T is. I'm seeing too many photo shoots with the, I mean, the drip is, it's dripping. Do you know how racist Bass Pro Shops is? Like, and it is the fact that I know y'all did not walk into Bass Pro and actually get the hat. Y'all got it from like some kiosk in the mall. Like, let's be very honest here. What if they did though? What if they They did? They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Y'all didn't. Y'all didn't. Y'all didn't. They could have. No. Oh, okay. No, drop, drop a thumbs up. In the comment section, if you have a Bass Pro Shop hat and you actually walked into a Bass Pro Shop and got the hat, 
please do that so no, I can respond with no, a thumbs down. Because wait a minute, time out. Because I've never seen them sold in a kiosk in the mall. I haven't. I, I haven't. Know. You might be right because I'm not walking into a Bass Pro Shop to get them ugly ass. They're not even cute. Well, let's just start there, okay? I've never been inside a Bass Pro Shop. I don't know. I mean, I know it's outdoor stuff like boats and fish and stuff and guns. Yeah. Someone did tell me I could go to there and get my gun. Yeah. Because I got my permit. Um, so, yeah, they said you could go there and get your gun. And I was like, okay. Absolutely not. I really am not understanding the infatuation with these hats. I want y'all to do better. There's way too many black-owned businesses that are like have these really nice dad hats or whatever, and y'all are going to Bass Pro Shop just so you can match it with a pair of yellow sneakers. Like, what is the tea here? What is the tea? And I want y'all to do I can't wrap my head around it, and I want y'all to do better. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is. The second thing is. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> Yes, ma'am. Mr. Kanye West, Mr. Kanye Omari West. Yeah, I, I am a former Kanye groupie. I loved Kanye West. So I know just about everything about him. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, y'all are fake. Mm. Y'all are so fake. And I can't wrap my head around the fact that y'all are still supporting this fiasco and putting your way putting yourselves in harm's way for listening parties in in covid central aka atlanta <laughs> okay to see an album that didn't even drop i'm her, i'm hearing that he did not perform he was just walking around talking like no walking around talking just no just at a big like there was no there was no show it was literally a listening party then he still has not dropped the album but wait wasn't he in a stadium he was in the yeah he was there mm mm-hmm. mhm but he was just, it wasn't a performance. It was literally a listening party. And the album still hasn't dropped. He hasn't finished it. So hmm. I can't wrap my head around it. And I'm very I'm disappointed in y'all. I am just the 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 fiasco that that man, he was one of Orange Peel's biggest supporters. Biggest supporters. Huge. Huge. And I uh, Yep. I may be contradicting myself because I know we talked about this in the past about, you know, overlooking um, the person for the artist. Mm-hmm. But in, in this, this is a, this is one and the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want y'all to do better. If y'all going to support Kanye West, you might as well support Lil Peep and everybody else that was up there. Who? You know, the one that, I don't know, one of the, one of them. <laughs> One of the dudes that was supporting Orange Peel, like, oh, there's a bunch of rappers that did secretly, like, support him. Mm-hmm. And mm. I just, I can't, the fakeness from some of y'all is just, I, it's it's uncanny at this point. It's ridiculous. I had no idea about this at all until pi- pictures and stuff, like, popped up on, like, Twitter and, and Instagram. And I was like, oh, he did It's crazy. Thing. It was a lot of people there, too. It was like, it had to be packed. It had to be it was so- packed. sold out. Was it free or whatever? No, nope. Oh, it was not. It was not free. It was not free. Wait, 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 wait. So well, like, as well, I think it. Well, I think for students, I think for Clark Atlanta students, he gave out like five thousand free tickets or something. Oh like wow! That. Which that was dope, but That's like, cool. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. No, and I and I really shouldn't be either, sis. But it's just like, y'all wearing Bass Pro hats. Y'all supporting him. Like, what? <laughs> what's next? You, if you're gonna do it, just go full Republican. You posting his ballot in 2024 too? Cause we're watching you. Wasn't he supposed to be running for president in 2020? Remember that? Oh, that's right. Can I forgot we, about that. I didn't. I remember that he was supposed to be running for president in 2020. Mm, very ghetto. What can't you wrap your head around, sis? Um, mine is very simple. I'm actually gonna need the help. Okay, of okay. the people. I've been making these headbands on my head for like a week now. Love them. Trying to. And I don't know if I should sell them or not because I don't know how I feel about them yet. So I'm wearing it today to get a feel for it. Am I, like I am it. I really rocking with it? Am I feeling it with the people, you know, I like think it'd it? be cute. So if you're watching this, I would like you to leave a comment. Yeah. And you can also comment on the episode too. Mm-hmm. But say, yo, I, I really like your headband. I will buy one. I just need to like, I, like, I just need some help because like sewing takes a lot of time. Mm. Oh my God. Sewing takes so much time. Sewing, there's math. Oh, that's ghetto. Cutting, measuring. Oh, it's a lot. I don't like none of these words. It's it takes a lot, sis. It's like it takes so much. So I, I just I can't wrap my head around this. Like I just I need some help. Like 
help a sister out, okay? I like them, especially like I'm just thinking about like different styles. Like if you did like a high bun or even with like the right outfit and you had like a swoop to the side yeah. type situation. I think that'd be really See, cute. See, my hair isn't long enough to give it that effect or whatever. I was going to wear a wig, but then I remembered I don't know how to lay, lay, uh, lay a lace wig. Even if you do like a high ponytail. Yeah. Like a real slick back ponytail. Yeah, something like that. Or even for like, you know, the girls with the 40 inch lace, you know? Yeah, every it's it's for everybody. This is an yeah. equal opportunity headband. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like it. <laughs> like, so yeah, that's really mine. I don't really have, I didn't really have that much. I, did, I, I didn't spend that much time like on social media this week. Bless you. So I've been reading books. You have been. It's okay. What number are you on now, sis? I'm, the book? On, I'm on book 20. That's dope. My goal for the year was 30 books. So I'm oh, so you're good. I'm what, you going to finish that next week? <gasps> oh, my God. Maybe. I mean. No, I, it'll probably be like maybe two books. So, you know, I might be at 22 next week. So maybe by the end of September? Because their birthday, you're not reading it. We're not doing it. I'm not. We're not doing it. So they won't. Okay, y'all. Here's what I also I can't wrap my head around. We going to Vegas for my birthday. And they like, I can't take no books with me. But What's I'm the like, point? There's going to be a, there's going to be downtime at some point. Right? When? When? <laughs> when? 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 There's going to be downtime at some point, though. You have a roommate for your hotel. They're not going to let you read. We're going to eat. Are you going to read while we're eating? No. What, are you going to be sitting at the pool while we're drinking and splashing you with water? Like, no, you're not going to be doing that either. Um, when we go walking down the street, what are you going to be doing? Like, no, like, none of this is happening. On the plane, fine, we'll allow it. There's, I'm saying, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a four-hour airplane ride. I can't. That's the only time. When they tell you to put all things away, when it's time to land, put it away. Y'all don't want me to be great. We do want you to be great. Y'all don't want me to reach my book goal. Y'all don't want me to. No, we want you to nah. reach your book goal, but we want you to do it on your own time. <laughs> and that is not. <laughs> like, like, and that's just not. Yes, it's it just is. not. Yes. All right, fine. Fine. No. I'll just make sure I have my books on my phone. Oh my! Now we now we got to get somebody to watch your phone to see if you're reading. Well, I, there's, what? There's gonna be downtime. There's gonna be downtime. There's gonna be downtime. There's going to be downtime. Any of our Vegas listeners, if you see us walking down the street and you see her on her phone intently, like, and you see her, like, check her phone. Ask me, like, hey sis, what are you reading? I'm like, oh my god, yeah. So I'm reading. Ah, uh, it's a great book. Very ghetto. Four star. <laughs> Very ghetto. <laughs> Very ghetto. <laughs> Very ghetto. All right, sis. Are you ready to jump into this show? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We have quite a let's list here today. Now. Oh, come on. It's okay. Sorry. We have, and we actually do have some um po 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 mm. politics. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man. Ah, it's okay. Man. It's okay. It's been a week. Yes, it has. It's been a week. So, um. Go ahead, take it away. Who child? Okay. All right. So. COVID has not disappeared, if you guys did not know that. Um, she is very much still alive and well. Yes. Matter of fact, she has her own Greek organization now. Okay. The Delta variant. Ma'am. I'm just saying. Ma'am. Um, <laughs> and that's no shade to any of, our, <laughs> any, of, any of our Greek listeners. I'm just like, I saw something about a Lambda one. I'm like, so it's just probates oh, now? Like, what's happening? Oh, my God. Anyways, so a couple weeks ago, like, literally... A couple of weeks ago, believe it, it was literally around Memorial Day. The CDC said, oh, you're vaccinated? Like, we don't really need the mask. You just take them off. It's not really a problem. Okay. Um, COVID grabbed her girl Delta, grabbed her line sister Delta, and uh, was like, yeah, I need you to handle this real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's really not looking good. So the CDC actually reversed their mask guidelines um, as of earlier this week. It's pretty ridiculous. So the CDC recommended that fully vaccinated people begin wearing masks indoors again in places with high COVID transmission rates, which means America. Everywhere. If you're in between, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does the song say from the red for the Redwood Forest to the for the to the East Coast waters or whatever? What's the America the Beautiful? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh. Anywhere between those, wear your mask. Yeah, okay, yes, indoors. Yes. Um, the updated guidance actually comes ahead of the fall when the Delta variant is expected to cause another surge in new coronavirus cases, and many large employers plan to bring workers back to the office, like mine. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, experts are saying, and see this word experts. I think we need to revisit that word because 
Who's the expert? Honestly. <laughs> Experts say COVID, COVID prevention, prevention strategies remain critical to protect people from the virus, especially in areas of moderate to high community transmission levels. <sighs> I mean, I don't... I don't really know what else to say other than you already know what we're going to say. I've still been wearing my mask. So let's just start there. I never went. And a lot of y'all, especially down here, like Ooh. It's, it's like the second they said it. Literally. You can see everybody just throwing their mask. I haven't seen anybody wear a mask in store in so long. It feels crazy. I feel like people are looking at me like I'm mm -hmm. crazy when I walk in the store no, and seriously. I still got my mask on. I saw a lady today um, that actually <clears throat> had a double mask. That's the first time I saw a double mask in a long time. Mm -hmm. My sister still wears a double mask <clears throat> when she's at work because um, she works with kids. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I, I never stopped wearing my mask either because I, I don't, y'all know I got trust issues. I do not trust people. And to Sierra's point, like literally the day after, um, the CDC lifted this, you know, their their mandate. Like, I went out with some friends, and me and only one of my friends were, like, the only ones at the spot that had on a mask. And I was just like, yo, the bartenders <clears throat> didn't have one on. Nobody had on a mask. No, like, it's, like, crazy. crazy. And I understand, you know, not wanting to wear the mask and wanting to get back to normal life. But I think the reality of it is that this is the new normal life. That's it. That's and You know that's what I'm saying? Period. Like, you, and that's hard for a lot of people like oh you're infringing on my rights i mean if your right is to die then go ahead like Ooh, wow nah, but no am i no you know what i'm saying like <laughs> get right or go left yeah you know, i just don't understand. Get, like it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, like keep up or not we're gonna leave we're we gonna you're gonna be behind that's really what it is do you want to live do you want to live um, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in our president. Um, I'm going to just say that right now. Okay. Um, I'm a little disappointed in him because even, you know, the whole, his whole campaign was wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. Even on election night, he had an, a mask inauguration that was mask, mask, mask. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then as soon as the <clears throat> CDC and I'm conflicted with it because on one end it's like, he's the president. So he has to trust the, um, the center of disease control. We and that's understood, mm -hmm. but I feel like he should have not done it right away because now look what you're doing like 90 days later, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, he even posted something on Instagram earlier a uh, new mass mandate for individuals in areas of, of substantial or high transmission and K through 12 schools. So, like, all of our, um, our school age listeners, parents. I know here in Charlotte um, and surrounding areas, a lot of the school districts are voting on whether they can mandate a uh, mask or not. Um, as of right now, I think it's only one county in the surrounding Char Mecklenburg County area that has said, like, yeah, like, you come into the school, wear a mask. Like, mm -hmm. some are just like, mm, we can't really tell them. I don't know why not. Yeah. Um, so it said, if you're in an area, and this is what um, – this is what uh, President Biden just posted on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're in an area of substantial or high transmission, you should see and that we need to get our wording together. <clears throat> you should wear a mask in public indoor settings, even if you're vaccinated. This fall, everyone should wear a mask in schools, regardless of vaccination uh, status. Um, I don't know. It, like I said, I'm not going to stop wearing mine. Can't stop, won't stop. Period. Uh -huh. <laughs> Run a checkup on buying masks from Amazon.com. I, I need to order some more. Yeah. Um. I I also don't know what else to say, sis. Like. I, yeah. Listen. Lysol, Clorox, like. And you know what? It honestly, like the CDC going back and forth, it like it kind of like discredits them a little bit. High now, key. And that is something. Oh, that's that's bad because like. It's not good at it all. It is not good. Just think about the number of people, like, I, I'm just thinking about, like, all the anti-vaxxers who are mm. like, oh, man, I don't even want to think about it right now. But so, so listen, <laughs> I know, like, so I was, like, looking at a report from CBS News, mm -hmm. and, like, the reporter, he's in a hospital room with an anti-vaxxer who's literally been in the hospital for... Girl! You saw that? Yes! For months. If he's, I can find a video, hold on. I think I have it. I actually think I have it. It's, listen to what, I think I have it. Ugh. It's disgusting. Like, he, you have to see what this man was saying. And, like, we were like. A what? That, like, I mean, my man's is in the hospital. Here recovering. Goes. You got it? Yep. It's late February. Scott Rowe is one of them. Here I am, recovering, getting out of here finally tomorrow. Am I going to get a vaccine? No. 
Um, Why not? Because there's too many issues with these vaccines. This father, former baseball coach, small business owner, and hunter caught COVID and then he developed pneumonia. Before you got sick, if you would have had a chance to get the vaccine and prevent this, would you have taken the vaccine? Nope. So you'd have gone through this? I'd have gone through this, yes, sir. Don't shove it down my throat. That's what's local, state, federal administration is trying to do, to shove it down your throat. What are they shoving, the science? No, they're shoving the fact that that's their agenda. The agenda is to get you vaccinated. You know who Mr. Scalise is? I know who Steve Scalise is very well. Roe, who is a Republican. Listen, I don't know how much more, how, I don't know how much more remorse y'all want me to have for people who keep to talk like this, but I, I don't have it in me, okay? I don't have it in me. Yeah. All, everything that, that the U.S. can do possible, has, they have made it accessible for you. Free vaccinations, mm. get masks, get te- free testing. You are on your deathbed, sir. And you still refuse. I don't feel sorry for these people. You you play stupid games, then you win stupid prizes. I also don't feel bad for people that like you know that have that have COVID. And it, I shouldn't say I don't feel bad, but it's it's kind of alarming to me. <clears throat> people that have tested positive, and, it, and I, I do appreciate people that have like that post their status on you know on social mm-hmm. media like hey I don't call COVID you know da 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 you know. And then within two weeks, I see you posting you know, out with the crew. And I'm like, wait, what? Popping bottles. And I'm like, <laughs> God forbid I catch COVID, you ain't going to see me outside for a, a while. I would be so ashamed if I, I personally, I would be so embarrassed, like, and having to tell everybody, like, yeah, I caught COVID. Like, mm-hmm. I would, there was no, there's no way I could even think about, like, going into public and, and partying and, like. No. I'd be like, sis, we're not having an episode uh, for the next two weeks. That's it. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, and and that's and that's fine, like you know. But y'all just like seconds y'all get a negative COVID test. It's just like oh, I'm out in the world like with no mask. <laughs> and it's not like they haven't said you. Even if you are fully vaccinated, you can still get you can still get COVID. It makes absolutely no sense. But you know what? Uh, what y'all say uh, in the words of future? F it, mask, yeah, mask off. off, like <laughs> girl. Yeah, and I don't know why y'all following that man anyway. Oh. But oh. <laughs> like, oh. you know what I mean? Like, w- w- what are we doing here? Oh, um, <laughs> oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> what's next? I, it's girl. Okay, so uh, speaking of wars, like COVID. Uh, so remember January six? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so. They're actually starting to have a bunch of hearings from some of the first responders that were first on the scene on Capitol Hill when those thugs decided to take over um, the Capitol building. And it's very, very alarming that these um, that these first responders, cops, firefighters, all like the stuff that they the things that they are saying to get some of these Republican lawmakers. And I use the word lawmakers very tightly because these are the people that you are electing Mm -hmm. to make laws that are affecting your everyday life. They have to defend themselves against these lawmakers because in some way, some flipping how they don't believe that January 6th actually happened. It's really, really alarming. Um, There was one police officer, um, he's African-American and he actually was talking about is it Harry Dunn? Yes. Because I have a clip of Tucker Carlson, and mm-hmm. Harry Dunn is now suing him, so I can play this clip. Oh, God, Tucker Carlson. Uh, hold on. Information. What's the answer? And of course, she doesn't have one. Speaking of disingenuous, so the committee will proceed with one party. What will it look like? We'll think MSNBC with subpoena power. On Tuesday, Pelosi will call a Capitol Police officer called Harry Dunn. Dunn will pretend to speak for the country's law enforcement community. But it turns out Dunn has very little in common with your average cop. Dunn is an angry left-wing political activist whose social media feeds are full of praise, not coincidentally, for Nancy Pelosi. Here's a picture of the two of them together. Racism is so American, 
Harry Dunn wrote a one post, that when you protest it, people think you're protesting America. Hashtag, leave it to whites to tell blacks what is racist. Hashtag, I stand with Elon Omar. Hashtag, squad. Harry Dunn, ladies and gentlemen, just another fact-based witness to the insurrection. Jim Jordan is one of the members Nancy Pelosi banned from the commission. So um, here is a statement of the U.S. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn. He says, tonight, Fox News allowed its host, Tucker Carlson, who has not served a day in uniform, whether military or law enforcement, to criticize the, the heroism, heroism and service of African-American U.S. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn. Our client has served 13 years in law enforcement and on January 6, 2021, fought against an insurrectionist, violent crowd, no doubt many of them Carlson supporters, to protect the lives of our elected officials, including Vice President Pence. Officer, mm. Officer Dunn, who would lay down his life to protect a member of Congress, regardless of being a Republican or Democrat, will testify next Tuesday before the House Select Committee investigating the events of the uh, insurrection. Frankly, the last thing Carlson wants is for the truth to emerge of what happened that day and why. <sighs> it, oh, my God. I can't even, like, he also said that, like, on his testimony today that he was <clears throat> called that he was called, uh, you know, racial racial slurs several times while he was sitting there trying to protect the Capitol building. Do you know what type of person you have to be to stand there and have to protect this building and the country that is supposed to love you back <clears throat> while the president of the United States is calling them, quote, a loving crowd while you're standing there and being called a racial slur? Like... Do you know what type of person and what type of mental capacity like that he had to have that day and what he probably and what he has now? Like that is ridiculous. <clears throat> um, there was one um one officer that got so upset, like he was banging while he was testifying. It was just like you cannot sit here and act like um this did not happen. Mm -hmm. it, it's horrible. Um, Liz Cheney said she warned that a failure to act on the January 6th probe will remain cancer on our constitutional republic. Um, She's not wrong. But, I, oh my gosh. She's not wrong. And I just, I don't know. I just can't believe, I don't I just can't, uh, most of them aren't even arrested. Like, oh Speaking God. of which, one of the Proud Boys... Um, <clears throat> one of the Proud Boys that has been arrested. Where is my Twitter? What happened to it? I got rid of it. <laughs> um, one of the Proud Boys that's been arrested. He actually gave a an update from jail mm. on what's happening. Like, I don't know how he was able to do that, but you know, well, I do know. But anyway, um, <laughs> his name is Joe Biggs. He's actually the leader, one of the leaders of the Proud Boy. This is the statement that he issued from prison. Today is my three-month anniversary being locked up. Not allowed to work out. My body feels as if it has aged so much. Can hardly move. Walking has become very difficult. I sleep on a piece of steel welded to a wall within a thin mattress. I now have major back issues and shoulder pain from the bed. I've gotten maybe 10 hours outside altogether since being here. I get to go outside maybe three times a month. The food here is, is all soy-based. The food here is all soy based. Oh my God. It's so weakening to our bodies. Hardly any protein. Mostly processed foods and some kind of gelatin dog food looking stuff. No privacy allowed while taking it ish allowed. You have to be in view of everyone. Each cell has a shelf. You are not allowed to use it. Nothing can be placed on it. Lights go out at 1145 and back on at 4 a.m. for breakfast. Luckily, the showers are only one person allowed in a time. Every cell has a small window. Breaking any rules can result in losing ability ability to talk to family or a trip to the hole for a few weeks where you are stripped naked uh, and left in a, a bright freezing room. I have anxiety real bad now. Panic attacks so bad I black out. There are actual white supremacist gang members here who hate the fact the media call Proud Boys white supremacists. They tested me on what it means to be one of them and I failed miserably. Y'all hear something? Don't feel bad for you, Joe Biggs. I don't. I don't. Like. You do the crime. You got to do the time. Nobody. I don't think. Like, what did you think jail was? Like, that's what I'm trying to figure this out. Like, I think people that do bad things. Like, what did you think jail. 
they thought they was gonna be on some Martha Stewart vibes. No, no, I don't remember what Martha Stewart even did. Like, what she, what she do? Embezzlement, embezzle. Oh wow, yeah. But like that, that's what happens when you cause riots and cause harm among people that done nothing to you. I do not feel bad for this guy. Oh my god. <sighs> Moving forward, what we got next? Um, <laughs> actually, that's pretty much it. Actually, well, yeah, that's pretty much it for um. Uh, for pol- actually no, national I'm sorry. politics. Yeah, for national politics. Mm-hmm. For national politics on a local level here in Charlotte, there is actually some really good news that we have to give about a new uh, non discrimination ordinance. Uh, ordinance uh, when it comes to our LGBTQ community, this is pretty dope. Um, where is it? I'm a- Yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's a new, there's a new, um, there's going to be a debate um, later on, um, or oh, I'm sorry, next month about new discrimination um, ordinances, um, you know, for LGBTQ. So this is a proposed ordinance that will protect sexual orientation, gender identity and expression and natural hairstyles, while also including employment protections for people who work at businesses with less than 15 people. That's important because federal employment law only explicitly bars such discrimination by employee by employers with 15 or more workers. So for all those who work at small businesses, nonprofits like myself, where you only got four team members, this is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so um, an expansion of the ordinance to cover employee employers beyond city government is a major change. And this comes from Republican Council member Tyreek Bakari version of amendments to the non-discrimination ordinance with uh, um, sim- similar, 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 Similarly? Can, yeah. Wow. I can't say that word. Similarly. 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 Now you're going to me- keep going. You're going to mess me up. Ban discrimination <laughs> by, <laughs> by employers with uh, any uh, size workforce. Um, this is this is really, really great. Mm-hmm. This is really great. So um, if it like the ordinance will actually go into effect January 1st, 2022. Um, I hope it goes through. I do too. Like, yeah. and this is something that like it's been brewing since like last year, and this is coming from reporting from the Charlotte Observer. Um, so yeah, like <clears throat> definitely, uh, you know, definitely kind of keep your eyes out. Like Charlotte, I'm pretty sure they learned a lesson from that ridiculous HB two law that caused the city so much money. Project Peck. <laughs> oh, Project yeah. Peck. I can never not think about him. He really made us lose that bag. Pay attention because he's supposed to be running for a uh, senator as well. PayPal was supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. PayPal was supposed to be here, and he messed that up for us. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's it for that. Mm. Well, remember you can find all local news like this and more on itstheblock.com. Uh, lifestyle, arts, arts, culture, entertainment, us, black excellence, black queen, black queens, black kings. Amazing articles. My sis writes for them. I do. You, she does. I got a new article coming up soon. Y'all will see it. Ah, 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 ah. So, yes, it's theblock.com. That's where we are. That's where you need to be. Period. For show. Period. It's purr. <laughs> purr. I don't like that word. All right. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it either. We, we got a few things, but this shouldn't take us too long. Mm-mm. We'll start with the biggest thing of the day. Um, Rolling Loud happened this past weekend. Mm. Um, hood activities at its finest, if you ask me. Um, but uh, there was something that happened that had the girls talking, and of course, it it, it was the baby, Mr. Baby, again in the news for saying some what is going homophobic on with Jonathan, and, and, yo. And I'm going to play this clip for y'all right quick. Mm. Um, it's dis- it's disturbing. It's, it is it's disturbing, and it's just weird. It's very weird. It's like. Why are you thinking about this? Mm. Okay, hold on. All right, here we go. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking nigga dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone on. Let's be up. real about this shit. Yeah, keep it fucking real. Some of y'all niggas suspect as a motherfucker. Let's be real. Fellas. Oh, there's another one. Wait, that's not even the right one. Hold on. There's another one. That's a little bit more. Like what? Here it is. Here's the right one. Okay, here we go. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone light in the air. Lady, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone light in the air. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking nigga dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone light in the air. Let's be real about this shit. 
Yeah, keep it fucking real. Some of y'all niggas suspect as a motherfucker. Let's be real. Did y'all hear the crowd? It was like crickets. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, dude? What, why are you... Like, what? That's what you say to the audience? Like... This first of all, this isn't like it's like what are you? Why what? do you? Why are you bringing up HIV and AIDS? Yeah. Why are you bringing up a men who got <laughs> fellatio in the parking lot? Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not get none while you was at the parking lot? Like what is happening? They too don't know a woman's cooch tastes like water. If she say it does, she's a liar. <laughs> okay. You know what? You know what? Because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of these women out here like... It tastes like pineapple. No, it don't. No, it don't. It don't. You're a liar. It don't. <laughs> Nonetheless. It tastes like sweat and soap. That's it. And it's fine. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm weak. <laughs> I said it. I'm tired of y'all. <sighs> Nonetheless, people have been getting... No pun intended. In his ass. Ah! Uh, <laughs> for, for, for. <laughs> Yo, I can't. I can't. I can't. I cannot. <sighs> Yo. Yo, this guy is a mess. They've been getting on him because, like, that was unnecessarily homophobic. It had nothing to do with anything. And then the DJ talking about, yeah, some of y'all niggas just us. And I feel bad. Like, I don't know the DJ, but the DJ probably like, I'm like, what? Like that's, but he had to go along with it. You know what I'm saying? You try, he trying to hype the club crowd up. Here's the thing. People are gay. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. It is what it is. So what? Why are y'all so bothered by people who are gay? Ooh. If you're not gay and you're not sleeping with them, What's the, where's the tea? What, where does the where is the, how, how does it? What, what's the problem? Like, Y'all seriously stay out of the community's business. I really don't understand. I don't. I really don't get it. Like, I'm really like flabbergasted. Yeah, I don't understand. It's not looking good for him. Like, first of all, on top of that, he brought Tory Lanez out with him. Oh, that's right. With and Megan Thee Stallion, I think performed either right before him or right after him, and it's just like, oh my god, like, dude. Really? Like what? Like why? And and when Tory Lanez came out, so he brought him out in like a costume and at the baby costume, like the crowd was like, "Oh, okay, yeah." Like he don't. I don't care what nobody say. Tory Lanez do not slap like that. Like, and I know my niece is gonna get me because she loves Tory Lanez. He really don't slap like that. He's had a couple good songs, but like, let's stop acting like he's Chris Brown or some shit. He's not. He's not. He's not, and never is going to be. No. Especially if you keep doing the stuff that you're doing and hanging out with lame niggas that walk around. Like, what are you doing? It don't slap. And actually, all y'all <clears> going to Rolling Loud putting y'all health at risk for Kodak Black? Like, y'all should be ashamed of y'all None like, of y'all was wearing masks out there. Nobody was wearing a mask. Like, Rico Nasty said look like it was dope, though. I like her. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it was so many people. Like, yeah. I saw City Girls. Ba- like, I just want to say, like, I am... Ah, the baby, no, mm. no, sir. This go, this is crazy. Fix it, fix it. Do something. He, I did see that he went on like Instagram Live, and was like, I guess trying to defend it, but it just really wasn't lurk, working. And like Dua Lipa, that he has that amazing song uh, out with, yeah. which again, going front when I first heard he was on a remix, I was like, for what? She don't. But I blame I yo real quick. I blame artists. Like I always notice that artists outside of hip hop and R and B, they just want to work with who's popping right now. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, even though that song is great, even with him on it, like the remix, like, okay, I see it on Twitter. I mean, not Twitter, TikTok, TikTok. all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it's working, but it's like, she was like, this does not sound like the person that I worked with. You don't know him. You recorded one song with him. Y'all probably, y'all probably weren't even in the same studio. It, She's from England. Like she probably period. recorded that in the studio in England. Y'all met they, at the Grammys or right. when y'all did the video. Child. Stop acting like y'all need to stop. Like, I don't think that you like. I don't really think you need to say something because I think your real fans would know. Well, I don't know. You never know, but it's just like, stop acting like you know you're best friends with these people y'all work with because you really don't know them. Mm. Like, well, I mean, I love my sis. Like, you know, this like, is my sis. Okay, like, like we know each that's other. That's different. Like, that's a different we, situation. We know each other, but 
But did I don't do we know Jesus and Mero and like no, no like we love to work with them one day but that's a different situation ah what's up <laughs> <laughs> we, call us like we love to work with them but like no we don't know them like we just fans and just say that right ooh child y'all are ridiculous yes. out here yes um next thing we got on the list Lavar Burton is finally hosting Jeopardy this week it's Thursday when this comes out so just watch it yeah um he has been put- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, like, he has been attention. petitioning. He wants to. He wants to be the new official, like full time host of Jeopardy. Wonderful, the ma- oh, reading rainbow. You know, I'm over here geeking. Like butterfly in the sky. That was my show. Yo. So shot, I'm not an avid reader because, like, take a look. I loved reading rainbow. It's in a book. Well, Lavar Burton taught me how to read. Like reading rainbow. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, okay, I'm good. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I go, I'm not gonna cut up no more. I'm gonna be good, oh y'all. I'm gonna be good. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, you know, mm, it's in a book. Yes. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. oh so anyway, God. yes. Please check your local listings to check out when Jeopardy is on. Everybody should know when Jeopardy is on. But just in case you don't, yeah. you know. It literally been so, on the same time slide. As right, <laughs> get those get those ratings up so he like can get that uh, so he can get that position to be the full time oh black Jeopardy host. That'd oh, be great, yo. That would be great. I always wanted to go on that show. I'm not that smart though. I couldn't do it. They be <sighs> no. So I'd be like, how did you know that, nerd? Like, how did you know that <laughs> in 1512, Marie answered what? <laughs> they be like green. The, what? What? How do you know that? <laughs> how what? did you know that? What is green, Alex? <laughs> Give me, like, give me Family Feud, uh, Wheel of Fortune, and that's where about you know that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yes. the, or Ellen's Game of Games because like mm-hmm. I like silly stuff like that. But uh, Jeopardy, some smart people up there. Okay, could not do it. Could not do it. Um. Okay, we got some a few serious things here. Ooh, chaff. Sis, you want to talk about this prison release plan? Oh, I really don't, but it needs to be said. Yes, it, it does. really needs to be said. So, because of COVID nineteen, you know, prisons has been kind of an overlooked um, hotspot. Honestly, you know, they're they have limited supplies. They're on top of one another. It's ridiculous. So, but there is a um, there is a program that actually um, that has actually released a lot of prisoners, and it's called. It's called the COVID-19 Prisoner Release Plan, and it's pretty cool until you figure out what happens. So basically what this uh, Prisoner Release Plan says is like, yes, you can come out of jail so that, you know, we're not as crowded. But once the pandemic is officially over, you do you will have to come back to prison and uh, finish your sentence out. So this is actually coming from Blavity. It's ridiculous. So there was um, one prisoner. His name is Kendrick Fulton, Fulton Sr. He's in Texas. Um he actually was released last September. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really pretty sad that since he's been released, um, he's he was serving, he served, he has served 17 years. Wow. He served 17 years behind bars. Um, unfortunately, it was for some drug stuff. Mm-hmm. But since he's been home for the last 10 months, he has earned his commercial driver's license and even secured a job that's paid him, that's paying him $24 an hour. Wow, that's great. Yeah. He's at home. He's actually currently serving the remainder of his 33-year sentence. So he has 30... He's he His sentence was 33 years. He's already served 17. Mm-hmm. That is insane. Unfortunately, all that work may have to go to waste because he may have to go, um, he may have to actually go back to prison. Like, so the New York Times actually published an article stating that Biden's legal team concluded the Trump administration memo had correctly had correctly in, interpreted the law. Incarcerated people now face the pre- wow. What happened? Really? While, while I'm reading? Are you serious? <clears throat> oh, oh my gosh! Nonetheless, it. While you look for that. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. That, it's okay. It's okay. But it's really messed up that they send him back because he has now made himself a contributing member of society. You know what I'm saying? He's working. He, he's got a job. Like, he's really doing good for himself. And to send him back into prison is really messed up, especially because, obviously, he's doing a really great job. There mm-hmm. really should be some type of, um, uh, what's the word? Leeway? Something. You know? Especially like you've already done 17 years in prison. Like, right. I think we, I think you get the point. And you're being an upstanding 
contributing me- member of society, a great citizen. That part. You know what I'm saying? That part. It's crazy. That's messed up. Um. Okay, here it goes. Jerks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so incarcerated people now face the pressure, pressure of being sent back to prison once <clears throat> the pandemic is officially over. Whoever and whenever that, that whatever that is. <sighs> <sighs> It's it's pretty it's it's I was like reading this I thought it was it was it was pretty horrible. So the Marshall Project reported that only seven percent of low risk black male incarcerated people would be considered for release. Wow. Those who go home were taunted when just fifteen days before President Joe Biden took office, Donald Trump's Justice Department penned a memo forcing roughly forty five hundred incarcerated people back to prison after the emergency period ended. That's messed up. If you was going to do all that, then why even let me out? I mean, and that part. And you know what that is? That's because y'all didn't want to take the proper precautions to make sure that the prisoners were safe during COVID. Yeah. That includes masks. That includes testing. Yeah. Oof. I don't get it. I really don't understand, like, why. I don't don't really understand. So, um, Kendrick Fulton, like, I really do hope that he's able to stay out and keep his employment and, you know, move forward in life. Like, a commercial, basically, about to be a truck driver. Yes. Like, and they make make. They make money, and y'all and y'all need the drivers. Y'all need the yes, drivers. Yes, they do. Every time I'm on the road, if you look hiring, like, yeah. <laughs> always, <laughs> always ridiculous. People who should not be hiring, Frito Lay. Oh man, Frito Lay, whoever is running that that company, y'all going to the hot place. You guys are going to be going to hell. Um, Sis has a better take on this story than I do. A young man was electrocuted while working at Frito Lay. Correct. Oh my gosh! Yes. Um, and maybe we'll just post this on like this, our Twitter page or whatever, so you can see exactly <clears throat> what this young man has gone through. Um, it's pretty disgusting. Um, he was electrocuted on the job. I'm sorry. His name is Brandon. Of course, I'm not giving his full name. Mm-hmm. Um, he was electrocuted on the job while working for Frito Lay. Um. It started, like, literally the suspectness started from that point. Um, They said they got him an ambulance. They passed four hospitals on the way to this one specific hospital. It took them 45 minutes. And that's because Frito-Lay has signed a contract with this specific hospital. Of course, they don't name the names. This specific hospital for reasons that we're about to tell you. And what he was saying was that after that, um, like, two days later, of course, he's in a whole bunch of pain. You know, because they found it like he had like a herniated disc. There's been a whole bunch of stuff going on. He actually had to call out of work. It wasn't like, I mean, anybody that gets electrocuted in a job, you would think common sense is like, oh, he ain't coming into work. He needs to sit down for a minute. Right. He had to, excuse me, he had to physically call out of work. And then they were like, okay, so, but are you going to be here tomorrow? Because, like, what's what's going on? Because we still need you. One, because he is he was a supervisor. Um, you know, so of course they expect his leadership and everything like that. Um, and remind you, he's also, um, he used to be, uh, he used to be in the Navy. Y'all veterans that y'all love so much, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, after that, everything just went downhill. He applied for a long-term and short-term disability. He said his long-term <clears throat> disability was approved, but it took months and months and months. So of course, once his long-term disability was approved, Frito-Lay cut him off from, uh, from their insurance. So now whenever he had to go to the doctors, of course it's out of pocket, but you're not getting any money coming in. Mm. So where are you getting that money from? <clears throat> him and his wife said they actually had to steal from their kids' bank- piggy banks. Just for him to go to the doctor to get the proper care that he received for an incident that happened on the job. That is ridiculous. And it gets worse. So now Frito-Lay is actually, um, he decided to uh, sue Frito-Lay because this is ridiculous. Like, yes. like you should, yes. and, it's, and he said it wasn't on some pettiness. It was just like right is right and wrong is wrong. This is horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, why am I suffering for some, I didn't do this. It's not like I electrocuted myself. It just happened. He said he pressed the door. Like any other work day and shock. So now Frito-Lay has actually actually, um, hired people to follow him and his family pretty much to make just catch him doing anything that he's not supposed to be doing since he's quote unquote injured. You know what I mean? Um, The wife had like they had to pull their kids out of school because they're scared for their safety. That's terrible. Um, She said that they have recorded her doing uh, lawn work, playing with the kids, uh, him walking to the store. It's horrible. That's terrible. And that just goes right into why people don't want to go back to work. Oh, that part. Look at how look at how horrible Frito Lay is treating him. 
horrible. And I we wouldn't want to go back to work either. And we saw that the Frito Lay workers that had been on strike for days and days and days, they just <clears throat> went back because they finally came to an agreement on a pay increase. But like, it's more than that. Like, so uh, m- my um my advice would be like, I love Fritos to death. Don't get me wrong. Frito Lay Pepsi Co. Let's be very Frito Lay Pepsi Co. Look up exactly what products that they um that they sell because it's not just chips and dip. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Um, yeah, it is. You know and. Don't buy them. That's buy, terrible. Buy something else. Munchos or something. I don't know. That's absolutely terrible. Munchos tastes better anyway. All right. The rest of these we can kind of run through. Uh, so World Emoji Day was last week, and Apple announced that they are going to release a pregnant man emoji to represent trans men. Um, I think it's dope. I think it's necessary. Trans men can still get pregnant. Oh, that's true. Yes. I always have to think about like yeah. yeah. So people I of course people have a lot of things to say, but I mean I think it's cool. I don't really have nothing to say about I, I don't know. Yeah. I know that the like, <clears throat> I remember like back when Oprah was on TV they did have a pregnant man mm-hmm. on her remember that? Yeah. On a show, like it was like breaking news. It was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Um because I I think this person did not have bottom surgery just yet. Ah. Um so yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, <clears throat> if you don't like the emoji, just don't use it. And it's really that simple. There's so many emojis. Like, just pass by it. It's like, who cares? So, <laughs> grand over the grand, close like, it. Just don't use it. Um, I bet you five dollars y'all will though. Like, y'all say something funny to your friends, you can put mm-hmm. like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. Or like a picture of Chloe Bailey come down. They're like, oh, I'm pregnant. Yep. I'm telling you. You know what? I'm telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> in other news, my sis uh, hit me hip to the fact that Boosie was banned from Instagram again. Oh, my God. Shocker to me. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, I do not know why. What you got over here? Oh, my gosh. Like, so basically, he um, he's chalking it up to racism, um, but apparently he violated their uh, the Instagram's nudity clause. Um, again? Yeah. He said it was it was up to racism, but of course he went on the Breakfast Club. The only people that would actually listen to his ass um, and was talking about like you've got to draw the line somewhere. It's uh, it's a nudity policy. We try to be. Cl- I'm sorry, that was what the Instagram um, uh, Instagram the head of Instagram uh, Adam revealed mm-hmm. um, the real reason. You have to draw the line somewhere. He explained it's a nudity policy. We try to be clear. You can appeal, but if you have too many strikes, something will happen. Like you do this all the time. Um, yeah, so they were talking about it on the Breakfast Club, and look, whatever. Um, the girl who I posted on my piano, she had emojis over everything. You took my Instagram, and you took her Instagram. You gave her Instagram back in three to four days, but you look, but you took my Instagram. Aren't you like forty five years old? Shouldn't you go like raise your kids or something? Right? <sighs> he gives me a headache. Ugh, like. You really that mad that you're banned from it? It's not like you got a business to run or anything, like, you know, where Instagram is... Like, we would be upset if Instagram banned us, like, damn. Yeah. But to Instagram's point, like, you posting you, stuff, you like... You always posting naked women or women or doing having women naked on the Instagram live. Right. What do you think is going to happen? I mean... Um, <laughs> like, I mean, like, seriously. What else do we have here? Oh, my um, gosh. PrEP, which is an HIV AIDS prevention medicine, mm-hmm. is to become free, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, and this is pretty cool. So I thought I had the article pulled up. Um, where is it? Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, PrEP, the HIV prevention pill, must now totally be totally free under all insurance plans. This is pretty uh, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They actually have been advised that they shouldn't be charging for Truvada or Descovy, Um as HIV, uh, as HIV prevention and that associated clinic visits and labs must also be free. That's really, really dope. Oh, that's awesome. That's yes. pretty dope. I know some people were talking about like, well, what's up with cancer medication, diabetes medication, all medication. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I actually agree with you guys. Like, you know, I saw some, you know, homophobic. I want everybody to, and this is, this is, this really sucks. I want everybody to stop using HIV AIDS as like the, the LGBTQ stamp. Yeah. You don't have to be a part of that community to unfortunately catch a- mm-hmm. HIV. You could be into drugs. You could just be messing with somebody who is not as clean as you think. So I think we have to stop, you know, like, oh, well, you know, we can't just cater to LGBTQ. That's not what 
that's not right. all HIV. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and if you look at history, of course, unfortunately, that's what the government used to kind of pin this disease on uh, the LGBTQ plus community. But it's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Just educate yourself and be safe. Absolutely. That's really it. Absolutely. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, next thing we have, CAU to cancel the student debt. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm but jealous. the president of, no, what's the word? Oh, theirs is called the president, not mm-hmm. the chancellor. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. President, <laughs> the president of CAU sent out a letter he's, um, earlier this week. He said, I have some fantastic news to share. We are pleased to inform you that we are canceling and clearing CAU student balances with the university for spring 2020, summer 2020, fall 2020, spring 2021, and summer 2021. Students will be able to enroll for the fall 2021 semester with a zero balance. So basically, the um, um, wow, the financial aid office is out of business. Wow, like nobody's working there. Not 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 uh, this upcoming semester. Dang, <laughs> I'm jealous. I love it. I ain't, I'm oh, jealous. That's gonna be so convenient for them. It's gonna suck if y'all don't have no homecoming tonight. I'm just gonna say that we ain't gonna be able to do nothing because COVID's running around here rampant. I'll well. be like, that's fine. I ain't got no balance though. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I don't need homecoming because I ain't got no man. Damn. I don't need it. Like, I, I'm being real with y'all. That was okay. a hater on me because I'm like. Because uh, Navient is hitting me up now still. Like, hey, girl. Uh-uh, wait a, it's not September yet. What do you want? <laughs> it's not September. I had to tell him, like, yo, stop calling me. Like, yo, y'all doing the most. It's not September, girl. Get out of my face. It's really not. Relax. <laughs> Ch- um, Speaking of spending, putting money where it is needed, Little Nas X released his uh, video, Industry Baby. Beat is fire. Yo. Video's kind of cute. Um, it says, Little Knox X uses his prison-themed industry baby video as a fundraiser for the Bail Project, which is a nonprofit that is combating mass incarceration. Um, he says, Music is the way I fight for liberation, but true freedom requires change in how the criminal justice system works, starting with cash bail. I know the pain that incarceration brings to a family, and I know the disproportionate impact that cash bail has on black Americans. Amen. There are so many stories that call on us to take action, and I invite you and I invite you to join me in this important civil rights issue. Listen, this is, uh, for me, this is a little Nas X Stan account. Uh, yes. This is a little Nas X Stan podcast, because, like, yo, his team... Working, working hard. I just love, I just love, like, I just love him. I love him being black and gay and loud with it. Just who he is. I like, like I like that he trolls people on the internet. <laughs> like, it is, like, he is my, like, oh my God, like, it is just mm, so good. Like, I just love, I just love him. I just love him so much. I found his, his TikTok and I haven't turned back yet. Like, and I never will. I like, I love it. I, I, lo- <laughs> I love how he was, bit, like, he was like, uh, industry baby video is not for kids. I'm telling y'all now because I want to hear y'all mouth. Right. Per. I don't hear it. Love it. Okay. Go off. A um, couple more things here. Uh, new Jordan Peele movie comes out. Poster. He released a poster. The movie is called Nope. Uh, and, of course, it uh, stars my boo, Daniel Kaluuya. Mm-hmm. Haven't mentioned you on an episode in a while. What's um, up, Another boo? Daniel Kaluuya film. You good? I'm just saying, like. Are you good? No. Yeah. No, no. No, What's I am. Like, nah, I'm just, I don't think you are. All I'm saying is, like, you know. You mad, bruv? No. Th- oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like um, so yeah it's supposed to stand, uh, star Daniel Kaluuya Kiki Palmer and Steven Yoon I think or Yin I heard he's fine too he I, is bad that's what the girls are saying he is bad I have to look him up it's like Daniel Day Kim him oh like, my god Daniel Day mm-hmm. Kim Ooh, that is a fine yeah he's <laughs> man, bad that man is so fine shout out to Kiki Palmer Kiki Palmer has like since she touched on this earth, she has not took taken her foot off our necks Virgo since she energy. was like eight years old. That's right. We share a birthday. Mm. That's right. Virgo Well, energy. then that makes sense. Yes. Duh. <laughs> um, so yeah, the movie comes out next year on July 22nd. Can't wait to see it. You know, Most definitely. More more black horror uh, done the right way. No Are we sh- going to be able to go back to the movie soon? Because I really want to see Candyman. You, you, you can already go and see it. The mov- theaters are open. I want to go see Candyman like, when we get back from Vegas. Yeah, theaters are open. So I you need you, to, you need to see Yaya and his element. Oof. Oof. Jesus. God, I love him so much. That man is fine, too. God, sorry. Um, okay. Uh... Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis do not wash their kids every day. 
Yeah. Is that what you said to me? Mm -hmm, That's what I said. Uh, They have bath days? Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were like, we don't believe in bathing our kids or ourselves too much. Too much? That's what they said. Yeah. That's exactly what they said. I know that house smelled tart. Okay. Like, I know it's probably a big house, so they can like, um, yeah, Ashton Kutcher and Mueller, like they say they don't believe in bathing their kids or themselves too much. Um, And it's, it's pretty like, this is what he said. So... He was like, I didn't have hot water growing up as a kid. And this is what Ashton Kutcher said. I'm sorry. I didn't have hot water growing up as a kid, so I didn't shower much uh, anyway. Hmm. Um, Yeah. Hmm. He said, I wasn't that. And Mila Kuna says, um, I wasn't that parent that bathed my newborns ever. Um, And then Ashton Kutcher said, if you don't see the dirt on them, clean them. If you can see the dirt on them, clean them. Otherwise, there's no point. He said he does wash his armpits and my crotch daily and nothing and nothing else ever. And has a tendency to throw some water on my face after a workout to get all the salts out. Ah, after a workout? Kuna says she washes her face twice a day. After a workout? Mm-hmm. What you mean you only throw water on your face after a workout? Y'all are going to hell. What? This does not shock me. Um, I used to babysit for some kids uh, in an old neighborhood uh, who were of Caucasian, and uh, I'll never, I will never forget this day. I will never forget it because my face when they when the parents walked out the door, I was like, seriously. She was like, oh, she said, you know, and um, give so and so a bath. Like he hasn't had a bath in three days. And I was like, three days? Like, why? I mean, these are little boys. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's summertime in North Carolina. Like, why? They're in camp all day. Why haven't? Why hasn't he taken a bath in three days? I want to know what Ashton not having hot water as a child <laughs> got to do with you not washing your ass and your kids' asses every day. You got hot water now. What is going on? People with less than what you have are... Wa- Do you mm. know that people with mm. less than what you have are washing their ass every day? Okay. Every right. day. Okay. Twice a day sometimes. Okay. And three times on Sunday. What okay, is like, happening? Baths plus showers. Like, I never really like, oh, I took a shower last night. What does that have to do with this morning? What does that have to do with this? I will never get it. I'm I sorry. Will never he get said it. that... She said after he worked out, he only throw water... I'll, I'll read it again. He said, no. he said, Kutcher said, Kutcher said he does not, he does wash his armpits and my crotch daily and nothing else ever. So his arms, nasty legs, nasty, and has a tendency. I want to, I want to say that word has a tendency to throw some water on my face after a workout to get all the salts out. This so, this, so basically they were on Dak Shepard's um, podcast and the talk turned into bathing. So Shepard had told the co host uh, Monica Padman that using soap every day rids the body of natural oils and then Kutcher and Kunis agreed and that's how that conversation happened I'm with you I'm with you a thousand and twenty percent I'm with you you do know that your body will reproduce those oils with within minutes and every day y'all are going to hell you're going to hell I couldn't like there are times where, like, you know, like, if I wake up on a Saturday morning, I ain't going to work. Yeah, it might take me a couple hours to watch, but I'm in my house. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, like, eventually I'm going to take a shower. Imagine you going to the red carpet and they're in front of you and you smelling onions. Wow. I didn't even think about that. <gasps> I am disgusted. Maybe they wash for special events? I hope so. I don't know. I don't know, sis. I, I- hope they not, you know, at these high-class events smelling like pork rinds. Damn. I'm disgusted. I don't know. I don't. All right. Um, <laughs> shout out to the Mil- the Milwaukee Bucks. I did. I did say that they would win. You did. But they won in four games, right? Five. Five. Oh, I got that right. Wait, hold up. Was this was it a sweep? Six game? No, it wasn't a sweep. No, it wasn't a sweep. No. I think I said five. Yeah. Yes. So I did get. I get. I did get half of that right. Uh, we are not a sports podcast. No. 
Um, but yeah, shout out to my homie Marcel. He was telling me some really great stuff about the Bucks, or whatever. They're like really involved with their city, like heavily. Yeah. And like Marcel was telling me, like how like you know Milwaukee is like 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 one of the most segregated cities still in the country. Really. And he was saying how like they have a huge African American. Uh, black male population who mm. is uh, a, uh, incarcerated. Wow. I mean, like he was, he really knew the statistics. So like when I see him out, like when he's doing his work, like Marcel does like a lot of like city work and work with okay. the people. It makes so much sense now. Yeah. It makes so much sense. Like, so yeah, shout out to the Bucks. Wow. I hope that brings the city, like uplifts the city because I didn't know, like he gave me, like he just shoot me all the facts, you know, he, mil- he Milwaukee through and through. So it was just really interesting to hear a little bit about Milwaukee. So I really hope that that li- uplifts the city. Yeah. A little bit, for sure. That means that all of, I cannot say their last name, Aku, uh, mm-hmm. Giannis Akanta. Yep, A. The Greek Nigerian brothers, mm-hmm. there's three of them. Mm-hmm. They all have NBA championships. That's dope. Two of them for the Bucks, one for the Lakers. And apparently their fourth brother um, is getting in there, too. So Slip. shout out to their mom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And shout out to Giannis. Like, they said, like, basically he wore... Uh, he wore black Air Force Ones uh, oh. to gain three, and they ain't lose ever since. So that Kill, was it. Killer energy. I mean, really. <laughs> so shout out to him. I'm 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 happy for him. Um, last thing on the list, which is sports related, Simone Biles has decided to step down from participating in the Olympics this year. Um, so I heard that it was because she had like twisted her ankle, mm-hmm. but then also it was like mental issues or whatever. Yeah. And you know what? Um, sis is the most decorated Olympian of all time, I think, a uh, gymnast. So I think she could sit this one out. Yeah, honestly. Uh, I think she good. I, I, I just don't feel like the Olympics is, I don't feel like USA is going to be like hitting like how they usually are hitting they anyway. They not. So uh, that's fine. Just all, 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 the whole country, just sit it out, you know? They're not. You know, we just come back in 2024, you know, that way we can get Shakari back up in there. Um, we can get... <gasps> Oh, we didn't even talk about that. What? Did you see that art, uh, article with the rapping? Mm-hmm. Rapino. Megan Rapi- Rapino. Yeah, Rapino. Yep. Talking about cannabis is making the world stage the Olympics. Girl. Maybe we come back to that next week. We have to like, come to. Because you know, it's only, it's only right if it's white. Are you kidding me? And I'm actually shocked at Megan because Megan is such a... Uh, an ally, like from what I understood, like I mean, you know what? Let me not let me not put allyship in this because she don't got nothing to do with that. But it, like, she can't help you know her skin color and things like that. But it's like, mm-hmm. seriously, I will save my I will save my opinion for next week's episode. Y'all make sure to remind us about that mm. Um, mm, mm, for mm. sure. I think that's really it for this show, though. Ridiculous, man. Yeah, that is it. I do think that Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka are getting ready to set a standard for mental health um, mm-hmm. for athletes, you know, because, of course, you know, we expect, you know, think about what athletes have had to put up with, you know, fans, like, talking about that, all that stuff like that, and it's like, hey, yo. Yeah. You know yes. what I'm saying? That's why Ron Artest went to their uh, audience and beat the hell out of that man. Y'all Done remember that? It. Done with it. <laughs> what was it called? The Malice at the Palace? Yeah. <laughs> And he probably looking at them like, oh, now y'all see what I was going through? Went right up in that uh, uh, that uh, st- uh, stadium. <laughs> y'all already know I was about that life, and y'all just running your mouth. He from Compton, right? I don't, he from somewhere over there in the hood. Wah, 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 wah. It wasn't a game. So I'm looking forward to more conversations about athletes and taking their, their mental health a lot more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, so shout-outs to, once again, two black women just doing what they need to do. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it for this week's episode. Mm. We did not have a, a lip service question for you this not week. Not this week. Let not me, this let week. Let me see if I, uh, if any of you uh, did what y'all was supposed to do. Dun dun dun. Or do I have to gaslight you again? It's like it's almost like I think y'all, I think they low key like being gaslit. Like that's what how that's how I feel. They about might. It. That's how I feel. Yeah, y'all do. Y'all do. Y'all do. What's the problem, y'all? I don't know. It's like, it's like, is y'all rocking with us or, yeah. or what? Like, we know y'all are. Like, we see the numbers going up. So, like, like, so like what's the problem? What, what's the problem? What is the T? Shout out to uh, Mr. on our YouTube channel. She said, "Y'all give me life and bring me joy." Oh, thank you, girl. Thank you so much. Yes, that means a lot. That means a lot to us. You bring me. I was thinking that. In my, I was thinking that in my head as well. Go ahead, girl. I forgot the words after that. Oh, that's cool. 
That's fine. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't have, we don't have any announcements yet. Yet. But things are on the up and up. We are so excited. Yes. And do the Cardi B dance. Yeah. If it's up, then it's up, then it's up, then it's That's up. That's all I know. Lean. That's just, oh. <laughs> there's a lean in there. Lean. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Please be sure to follow us on all of our social medias. We are on Twitter at Head Rap Pod. We're on Instagram at Head Raps and Lipsticks. Check out our Facebook page, Head Raps and Lipsticks, the podcast. Go to our website where we have t shirts and crewnecks that are for sale but not on sale at www.headrapsandlipsticks.com. Remember that we are on It's the Block.com. Lifestyle, arts, culture, entertainment, black people, black excellence. All of that is there. You can follow them at their website um, or Twitter and Instagram at, at it's the block underscore. And also, we are there. Okay? Right. We're so, right there. Yes. Um, don't forget that we are still trying to start our studio. The GoFundMe link is in the description box. But if you're not rocking with GoFundMe, Cash App is always a viable option. <laughs> with a Cash App, and you with a Cash App. Dollar sign head rap pie. You know the vibes. Ah, 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 ah. Um, Please be sure to follow us on all of our social medias. We're on Spotify. I mean, not social medias. Mm-hmm. Platforms. Platforms. Mm-hmm. Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and TikTok. Leave us five stars in a review. If you leave us five stars in a review. We read it here on the air. But, I mean, I would demonstrate it, but no one has left us a review. Ooh, sugar. There you go. There was the gaslight. I Damn. knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I be trying to save y'all. It just don't work. Nah, ain't no saving. Don't, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Yeah, it don't. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> hey, yo. You about to read these stupid ass jokes from Sean J? Um, actually, it's not. It's from another listener of ours. Okay. They sent me a video and they want to share this joke with everybody. They sent a video. They did. So we're going to play it right now. What kind of tomfoolery? Here we go. Here's your joke of the day. My mom! A man walks into a bar and no one's in there but him and the bartender. So he orders a drink. He sits down at the counter. Um, he hears, Psst. Hey, I like your suit. He looks around. He don't see anyone. Then he hears, I like your tie. So he looks at the bartender and says, thanks. And the bartender said, oh, it's not me. It's the peanuts. They're complimentary. <laughs> uh, thank you, Miss Stephanie, for today's joke. <laughs> no, nah, dog, because I talked to this woman three times today. I talked to her three times today. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought that was so cute. No. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. She's done in these She said, the Z, she said, I'll send it to you so you, oh, I'm going to send it to you right now. I talked to her three times a day. She's done. She's Damn, done. why she got to be done? She's done. She's done. Damn. All right, guys. <laughs> thanks so much <laughs> for listening to this week's We're episode. This the betrayal. Betrayal. <laughs> anyway, bye. See y'all next week. Bye. Tragic. <laughs> Tragic. Ah. I love your mom. I love it. She's done in these. She can't be. You can't cancel her and Sean J. Watch me. Damn. <laughs> <laughs>